Okay, so in this video, we're going to get back into the C sharp programming language, like I promised, and we're going to start by talking about declaring variables. And you've probably seen a math problem like this before. Uh, 5 plus x equals 7. And if I asked you to solve for the value of x, you would come up with 2, right? Uh, so using that same logic, we're going to take a look at another example that looks a little bit more like C sharp. x equals 7, y equals x plus 3 text block one dot text equals y. So what would you expect to be displayed to the text block? The value of 10. Uh, you've read C sharp on your own. You don't need me to teach you how to do this, okay? It's just common sense, right? Uh, in C sharp, x and y are called variables, meaning that they are buckets uh, in the computer's memory that can store a value. Now in this case, these buckets are holding numeric values, but we can create buckets that are just the right size for dates and times, for strings of text like we've already seen, or really, really big numbers, or numbers that have decimal places like money, for example. Uh, but, but in both of these cases, we would expect x and y to be numeric values. We know that, but we have to use C sharp to express this to the .NET Framework runtime. Remember, the runtime is what is going to allocate memory for our data. It's the car. Our code has to drive it in the right direction, and we have to give it the right instructions. And so we need to tell it that we need two spots in memory to hold some values. Uh, so we have two data items and we need to tell the runtime to allocate some space and memory sufficient to hold numeric data for both of those buckets, those variables. So let's do this. Let's create a new project in Visual Studio. So file, new project. I'm going to call this variables and click OK. And I'm going to go with the standard setup that we've been using up to this point. We'll start off with a, a button control. We'll move it, move it here into place. And then I'm also going to use a text block and move that into place. And the only thing I'm going to do is just change this text uh, so that I can empty out the text block. Otherwise, I'm going to leave this alone. I could rename these, but let's just not take the time to do that right now. Let's just roll through this. Okay, so I'm going to double click the button to open up the C sharp editor and I'm going to make sure that my cursor is in the right spot there between the open and close curly braces for the button one underscore click code block and we'll give that a better name a little bit later. But for now, what I want to do is type in the following code int x int y. We're going to set uh, x equals seven, y equals x plus three, and then text block one dot text whoops, text block one dot text equals y. Okay, so first of all, before we go any further, I know this code is not gonna run. We'll come back to that in just a moment. The first two lines of code here, that int x and the int y, those are the commands that I'm giving to the .NET framework that I need to place to create two areas in memory that'll hold integer values. Uh, and I'm gonna reference those two buckets in memory by the names x and y respectively. What does the word int mean? Well, it's the C-sharp term for the word integer. An integer is typically a mathematical term that refers to a number that has no fractions or decimal values. In C-sharp, it indicates a value, a numeric value, that can store a value from a positive 2,147,000,000 to a negative 2,147,000,000. If you need to store a larger number, then you're going to need to use a different data type uh, to continue to use this bucket analogy we've been using. You're going to need to use a bigger bucket, <laughs> okay? You're going to need more memory, potentially, allocated uh, for those values. But after we've declared the values here in those two lines of code, then we started assigning values to those variables and reading values from those variables um, in uh, the subsequent lines like 29 through 31. Uh, also, we use the equal sign a number of times, which you'll recall from a previous lesson, is the assignment operator. That's how we take one value and we assign it to another value like we're doing here in all three of these lines of code. Uh, we're also using the text property of the text block we have on our on our little Silverlight form, our XAML page, 
uh, and we're assigning it to the value of y. Now the big question here is, will this work? I'm going to start debugging to find out. So to answer the question, will this work? Well, I already knew that this wouldn't work. We, we said that at the outset. And the reason why this won't work is because uh, the text property is expecting to only work with the data type of string. We're working with the data type of integer. Now, how do we know that text can only work with string? If I were to take my mouse cursor like we did in a previous video and hover it over the text property of the text block, you see there it says string text block dot text. So uh, it is already telling me that very first piece of information there is the data type that this can accept. And it can only accept a type string. Uh, C Sharp is a strongly typed language, meaning that data types must be declared and honored. Therefore, when a situation arises when you need to use an integer where only a string will fit, then you need to perform a data conversion. What we're attempting to do is the equivalent of putting a square peg in a round hole. Um, and so data conversion is roughly the equivalent of cutting the corners off of your square peg so that it'll fit in the round hole, okay? And we're gonna demonstrate two data conversions in this video uh, from int to string and then from string into integer a little bit later. Um, but before we go that far, what exactly is a string? We kind of glossed through over this a couple of times already. It's simply a sequence of individual alphanumeric characters that are treated all together uh, and so a string could potentially hold a lot of information, uh, paragraphs and paragraphs of information. So we need a bucket that's large enough to handle a potentially very large uh, snippet of data like that, a, a collection of characters like that. So our text block can work with strings, but again, we have an integer, so this isn't gonna work. And before we can even execute the application, the compiler is stopping us and it demands that we fix this. So to remedy, we're gonna to have to convert our integer of y into a string. Now fortunately, integers have this neat little trick. You can, you can just do this, watch. I'm gonna go next to the y and I'm gonna hit the period on the keyboard to access the toString method. And so without getting too deep into this, integers have the ability to convert themselves into strings by using a toString method. What is a method? It's a name block of code. We actually, this is a method and this is a method, okay? But I don't wanna talk about methods just yet. Don't, don't pull me into that discussion. We'll talk about that later. Um, but at any rate, if we just make that one little change, that little data conversion step, now when we, we can run the application, let me pull this into view. And when our application executes, we can see it successfully writes the string value 10 to our phone's text block, okay? So uh, let's do this. Let's comment out this, these lines of code. And there's a couple different ways we could do this. I'm gonna use this multi-line syntax, like so. You can use any of the methods we described earlier. And now I wanna write some new code in here. I'm gonna go uh, string my first name my first name equals Bob. And then I'm gonna go my text block dot text. Whoops. Text block, I forgot what I named it, dot text equals my first name. Okay, so notice that uh, string is the keyword for creating a bucket in memory that can hold textual information. Also notice that I can name my variables anything I want within certain limits. Now as a convention, because most programmers do this, I use a lowercase m uh, for the first character of the name. So in this case, my first name, followed by capital letter for each of the other words within that entire phrase, my capital F first, capital N name. And so this is called camel case, like a camel with humps on it, okay? You should get into the practice of doing that as well for when you declare and use variables within a local method. Uh, before we move along, I want to um, point out a couple of things. First of all, uh, we're just gonna use strings and integers for the first couple of videos. There are uh, dozens of potential um, data types that we could use to declare our variables. Uh, but 
I want you to know these two inside and out. These were probably the most commonly used for simple scenarios. And then we can tack on additional data types as we learn more about C Sharp. Also, I want to point out that C Sharp is a case sensitive language, meaning that we can possibly add this line of code right here. And we could run this application and this would still work. Now, typically, if we were to name these the same here, we would have an error message and that's indicated to me in Visual Studio through the red squiggly line. But since C Sharp is a case sensitive language, it represents those as two different variables. So we have to be careful and be very attentive as we are declaring and using our variables. Uh, also, this is where IntelliSense comes in handy so that we reduce the amount of typing, we increase the uh, reliability of the code that we're actually working with here. Uh, so make sure not to name things too similarly because if you do, you might find that this case situation bites you and, and it's not a good, <laughs> good problem to have, okay? It's hard to, to track down those types of problems. All right, so um, one thing I want you to be aware of and I want to point out, you can also condense this code that we've written uh, like so. I'm going to actually comment all of this out. And I'm going to do this instead. String my first name equals Bob. Text block one dot text equals my first name. All right. Now, truth be told, I could probably even make this shorter if I really wanted to. Uh, I could get rid of the variable altogether. It doesn't really make sense. I could just go ahead and hard code uh, text block one dot text to Bob. But if I needed to use a variable for some situation within my code, uh, I don't have to use two lines of code, one to declare the variable and then one to set it to an initial value. I can do it all in one line of code. That's called initializing the variable. So I can declare and initialize. Here I'm declaring and I'm initializing the variable all in one line of code and that is probably what you should choose to do. Experienced developers are always looking for ways to write less code so they're always looking for a convenient way to reduce the number of keystrokes and with that reduction in keystrokes also comes a reduced amount of potential problems that you could introduce in your code so there's a couple of benefits there. Alright so what I want to do now is comment out this line of code and continue on with yet another example. And this time we're going to use that uh, basic style. Okay. So now Take a look at that. I have an integer and a string, and here I'm going to add them together. What do you suppose will come of this? Do you think this will actually work? Well, let's go ahead and um, run the application and see what happens. Okay, so we get the value 7 Bob, and we know that it has to be a string because the text property can only accept a string. So what's really going on here? Um, the reason this works is because of an implicit data type conversion that happens in this line of code right here. Uh, an implicit conversion means that C Sharp can figure out the data type conversion on your behalf without your intervention. Now in the case of a string, it knows how to convert a number seven into a string seven. Therefore, it implicitly converts the value and appends the word Bob to the number seven together uh, to a new string that's called Bob seven. Uh, let's do this. Let's comment this out and comment this line of code out. All right, so already we're seeing some clues from Visual Studio that lets us know this isn't going to work. Um, an int 
cannot reliably figure out a data conversion between a string and an integer. If it knew that the string was going to be something like the value 10 or 7, then maybe it could, it could do it. But in our case, how will it convert the word Bob to a number? It can't do it. In this case, we're going to have to explicitly convert the data types. Explicit conversion means that we will have to write code to handle the data conversion ourselves. Now we can use some pre-built features in the .NET framework as we'll do in a moment, but still the onus is on us to handle this situation. So well, let's comment all of this out and start over yet one more time and kind of wrap all these ideas up. All right, so int x equals seven string y equals five. Notice the five has double quotes surrounding it. Okay, so we're creating a string, a character of five. All right, so now I need to do something here to do an, an explicit conversion from a string into an integer. And the way we're going to do that is going to reference the int data type and then I'm going to use this parse and I'm going to pass in y. Then finally, because my third try is of type integer, I'm going to call a to string to convert it back to a string. So, you know, in a nutshell, we're essentially taking an integer, taking a string that we know to have a num numeric value inside of it. We're going to add that integer value to the string, but first we're going to convert it into an integer by calling this parse method, passing in. Uh, the, the string value. Now, this is a difficult um, uh, um, syntax to understand. As we look at methods in a coming lesson, this will make a lot more sense. For now, just let's accept it at face value and memorize this syntax uh, for use in this situation. And then finally, we're going to call the toString method on our integer in order to assign it to the text property. And if we run it, this should work. 7 plus 5 should give us the value of 12. Great. So the key idea in this lesson is how to declare, initialize, and work with variables and data types. In the .NET framework, even simple data types like int have some powerful helper features to convert one data type into another data type when needed. And so that's what we demonstrated here. And we'll build on these ideas in the next few lessons. So we'll see you there. Thank you. Mm -hmm.